Hi everyone. So today's lesson is week four, day two, and we'll be working on some hip opening poses. As you know, based on the article we read, oftentimes we consider our hips the storehouse for our emotions. So we are going to begin today's practice with a seated meditation. We'll take a few breaths together and then I will read an excerpt from Wherever You Go, There You Are by John Kabat-Zinn. Okay, so right now let's come to a seated position. Just imagine that where your body meets the floor or the chair, that's sort of like the base of a mountain. It's sort of where you're drawing your strength, you're finding your connection to the earth in your base. And as you breathe up, just imagine that there's a straw and you're breathing up energy from that center. So just breathe in, filling your stomach, your diaphragm, your heart center with breath. Let's take five deep breaths together. So inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Take two more at your own pace. And you're welcome to keep your eyes closed while I read this excerpt and just keep your awareness on your breath. You can allow your hands to just gently rest on your knees as I read this excerpt. Try recognizing the ways in which you meet obstacles with harshness. Experiment with being soft when your impulse is to be hard. Generous when your impulse is to be withholding. Open when your impulse is to close up or shut down emotionally. When there is grief or sadness, try letting it be here. Allow yourself to feel whatever you are feeling. Notice any labels you attach to crying or feeling vulnerable. Let go of the labels. Just feel what you are feeling, all the while cultivating moment-to-moment -moment awareness. Riding the waves of up and down, good and bad, weak and strong, until you see that they are all inadequate to fully describe your experience. Be with the experience itself. Trust in your deepest strength of all. To be present, to be wakeful. Okay, let's take three more breaths here in our seated mountain position. Okay, let's come to the mat. So let's begin by Warming up our spines with something called cat cow, which I think you've been introduced to in some of our other online videos, but we'll come to all fours. So our shoulders are stacked over our wrists, our spine is neutral, our hips are over our knees. So we're just kind of stacked here in this tabletop position. And we'll drop our belly and we'll reach our heart center forward. Our gaze looks upward as we breathe in. And as we exhale, we round our sinuses cat and we push away the ground with our hands. Let's breathe in as we come into cow. Breathe out as you round your spine, push away the ground. Let's do this two more times. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, 
Okay, so now we'll come to a seated position. It can be what I call with my younger students crisscross applesauce. Um, we're going to first practice something that some of you may be a little familiar with if you've ever been in any sports. It's called butterfly or cobbler's pose or um, seated bound angle. So essentially, um, it's kind of like how we began our meditation when we were seated in mountain position but we'll bring our feet to touch here. And our spines are gonna be really long and strong. Shoulders will be up and roll back. So there's a nice distance between our ears and shoulders. And um, some people can get really low. I have tight hips. So my knees usually are packed off pretty far off the ground. So it looks different in every person. Um, now just imagine when you're holding your feet that you're like holding open a book. Like your toes are splayed open, so your feet are getting in a nice stretch here. And I sometimes like to um, just give myself a little foot massage when I'm in this position as well. Um, our feet do a lot for us, so it's nice to give them a little thanks. Um, so you can hold your feet open like you're reading a book. If it's comfortable, you can just hold your toes like this. It gives you a little bit more leverage to have a tall, strong spine. Um, but this is really a nice groin stretch. Um, inner thigh stretch. Um, if you have blocks or pillows or blankets, you might feel more comfortable um, placing them underneath your outer thighs, so that's always an option. Let's stay here for five breaths. Slowly bring your knees back up to me. You can bring your leg bone in front of you and sort of shake them out. I typically like to windshield wiper my legs out, my hips out, um, in between those longer how poses. Um, so now let's move through again a couple rounds of cat cow, and then we will, um, from cat cow, move into something called balasana or child's pose. So let's come to our tabletop position again. Let's do um, two cat cows. Breathe in into cow and breathe out into cat. Push away the floor. Breathe in. Breathe out. And this time, as you breathe out, we're going to just slowly let our hips lower until they meet the backs of our feet, our heels. Now, it may be more comfortable to have your hips a little bit wider and bring your forehead to rest on your mat. Your hands can be out in front of you or if you're having some shoulder issues today, they can always come to your side like this. I'll keep mine extended in front of me. Um, child's pose is really about surrendering, letting go, it is a hip opening position, as I'm sure you can feel in your hips. It stretches out our spine as well. And lets us come in contact with the earth. It reminds us that we are supported and we are held. Let's take three more breaths here in Balasana or child's pose. When you're ready, you can slowly come back up to seated. And let's just take two breaths here, bringing our arms overhead. Breathe in, bring your palms to touch, and then breathe out. Bring your hands down through your spinal column. Breathe in as you circle hands overhead. And then breathe out as you bring your hands back to land at your heart center. Okay, now let's move on to our backs. Um, have those blocks or books or pillows handy as we move into these next poses. So um, 
We'll be practicing um, so, supine pigeon, which we practiced last time. It's called figure four as well, or thread the needle. Um, you might hear it various names if you go to different studios or have different teachers. Um, and then we'll practice happy baby. And then we will end with reclining bound angle pose. Um, Supta Bhairakonasana is the Sanskrit term. So slowly right now, you engage your core and try to lower. Take your time, go as slowly as you can so your core is really engaged. Okay. And we did practice um, this um, supine pigeon last week. So we'll keep our feet firmly on our mat. Our knees are pointing upward. Hands can be down by our sides. And we'll lift our right leg first and let our right foot land on our left knee. And if you'd like, you can bring up that left thigh. Um, find your sweet spot, sweet spot, just sway from one side to the other a little bit. Maybe you bring your right hand through that triangular opening um, that you've made with your leg, that's that four. And maybe you hold the back of your thigh or maybe you hold your shin. Let's take two breaths here. When you're ready, just let that go. Bring your feet back to your mat. Now let's pick up the left foot and bring your left foot to land on your right knee. Bring up that right foot. Maybe you stay here just holding your kneecaps as you gently sway. Um, maybe you could use a little more stretch and your hands will go to your right thigh or your right shin. Let's take two breaths wherever it is comfortable for you. And when you're ready, just bring both feet back to the mat. Now we will move into something called happy baby. That's um, kind of a little bit of a back massage and a hip opener, and it can also stretch out our hamstrings as well. So let's breathe in. And as you exhale, bring your thighs to almost meet your torso, and your shins and feet should be um, sort of perpendicular to your torso. If you're able, you can grab the outside of your feet. So you, you can have like a baby that's playing with its feet, right? That's why it's called happy baby. And then you can sway a little from side to side. And again, if this is not accessible to you, you can hold your shins as well. Sometimes that's where we're at and that's okay too. Um, but if you're able to grab your feet, you may be able to get a deeper stretch. So as you slowly roll from one side to the next, you're kind of releasing some of that tension that may be stored in your back muscles. And if you'd like, you can straighten one leg and then the other. That's where our hamstring stretch comes into play. When you just sort of roll into a stretch on one side and then the other. And then you can just come back to a gentle sway without the lengthening of the legs, if you'd like. Just come into stillness here for a moment. Really try to keep that um, tailbone touching your mat here, so it's not lifted like this, but it's really grounded and rooted into your mat. Take two more breaths here. Release. Maybe you want your legs to um, just sort of kick toward the sky, roll out those ankles by pointing and flexing. And then we will bring our feet back down to the mat. Now, Supta Bhattakonasana, this bound angle pose, um, is going to be very similar to butterfly or the cobbler's pose we practiced when we were seated. But this is supine, this is laying down. So we're going to bring our feet to touch while we gently 
Let our knees open wide. Now this is also a hip opener as the other poses were, um, but it can be very grounding and a stress relieving pose as um, in Shavasana when you really surrender and let go, you let your body become heavy. Um, however, it can be too much for some people's hips. For me, I often feel more supported when I slide blocks or pillows under my outer thighs. Um, just having that little extra support can feel more restorative to me. Um, but just, you know, take stock of where you're at. And our hands can come by the side. Um, Usually I let them be a little bit wider than directly next to my side or my thighs. Um, and I want to encourage all of you to practice Shavasana now in this supine bound ankle pose. So again, just let yourself become heavy. Do your best to let go of thoughts. And if you think a thought, again, it's no big deal. Just notice and see if you can let it go and come back to this present moment. I want to encourage all of you to stay here for five minutes if that's comfortable for you. You can always bring your legs into a Shavasana pose if that is more... Um, conducive to where you're at today. So let yourself just melt into relaxation now. Make this time for you. And I will say namaste to all of you and thank you so much. Stay in this pose. But I will end the video now. Have a wonderful week everyone. Thanks again.